This is Michael. He's 18 months old. He's our youngest. And my name is Lisa Halushka. There's something that you can do that's so simple and so easy and could make sure that your baby is okay for life. And that's prenatal care and the newborn screening. Newborn screening has been present in the state of Michigan for some time. However, we have developed many new techniques for advancing screening that weren't possible, say, 15 to 20 years ago. The procedure itself is extremely simple, very little discomfort for the part of the baby, and the rewards for it are tremendously outweigh the, any risk. It is extremely routine and very little discomfort to him. It's a simple test requiring just a simple blood spot that we can obtain a tremendous amount of information by doing this simple test that may prevent long-term problems for the baby that can imp involve mental impairments uh, or possibly even death. At 24 to 36 hours of age, the baby's heel will be prepped with alcohol, wiped clean, a simple lancet will make a small poke in the baby's heel. A few drops of blood will be obtained. We basically fill these small circles on the state newborn screen. The cart is allowed to drive for a minimum of three hours, and then it's forwarded onto the state lab in Lansing for processing. This is Drew. He's a bit of a miracle child in a lot of ways. There were some challenges and some real concerns when he came out. I, mean, I was scared during part of it, and I didn't want to show Lisa that I was scared. But in the end, everything worked out OK, and the doctors said all the tests seemed fine. So newborn screening was, to me, it was just one more check that we had to make. I was familiar that they were going to poke him and take some blood, and we had other kids, so we'd seen lots of that done. Never expected that there was going to be anything out of the ordinary. Newborn screening is important because we're able to detect early on medical conditions that otherwise would not have been detected by having this test done. All of our babies here are tested. A lot of times they don't find anything. Each year in Michigan, about 225 babies are diagnosed as a result of newborn screening. I actually had a daughter that was identified through the newborn screen 21 years ago, and she has a sickle cell trait. And had I not had that test done, I would have never known there was a problem. I got the call four days after he was born. And I picked up the phone, and they said this was the Michigan State Lab, and the preliminary tests for, for Drew were positive. It is always better to know and to be prepared and to find out something later on that could have been detected at birth. The likelihood of any child developing or having a condition that we screen for on the state newborn screening process in the state of Michigan is exceptionally low. We know after years of experience that if a disorder is found early that can be treated and treatment is started earlier, the outcome is much better. About one in every 100 babies has a newborn screen that needs further follow-up. This does not always mean the baby has one of the medical conditions. A second screening test may be needed. I remember reading briefly about it in the hospital when you get all the forms and information for newborn screening. The only thing I remembered was that PKU was first on the list. PKU is an inherited disorder in which the baby is unable to use a certain part of protein found in food and milk. For children like Michael, the identification of a disorder such as phenylketonuria, or what's affectionately called PKU, would not have been probably possible without newborn screening. The problem with many of these disorders that we screen for is that these children look perfectly fine initially, and it might be days, weeks, or months before problems are identified. So the importance of the newborn screen, in a sense, speaks for itself. Find the problem early, identify it, and treat it. Any parent that has a question regarding the testing can always contact the state or discuss it with their pediatrician who should have basic information on newborn screening. 
For a complete list of medical conditions detected by newborn screening, visit michigan.gov slash newborn screening. These conditions may affect blood cells, brain development, hearing, how the body breaks down nutrients from food, lungs and breathing, and hormones. The cost of newborn screening is part of the hospital delivery charge. If you cannot afford to have your baby screened or plan to have a home birth, please call 1-866-673-9939 to obtain a newborn screening card. I can't state it more bluntly, but to say that newborn screening saved my boys. Without newborn screening, I would have lost the essence of my children, who they are. And this relatively simple, routine, um, relatively pain-free heel poke that's done in the hospital was everything. There's now an added benefit to the newborn screening program and it's a program called the Michigan BioTrust for Health. And that program stores leftover, unused blood spots from newborn screening. It's very important. It enables us to improve the newborn screening program, enables us to assist in important public health research. Well, what the blood spot is, is a snapshot of some of the processes that are going on uh, at birth and perhaps even during pregnancy. And that information could be vital to the prevention of disorders like asthma, juvenile diabetes perhaps, the neurodevelopmental disorders like cerebral palsy and autism, and that, therefore that information could be extraordinarily helpful to reduce the burden of disease in children. One full blood spot is stored forever, specifically for future use by you and your baby, in case it is ever needed. The other remaining blood spots have all directly identifiable information removed and are properly stored for potential use in future health research. Generally, before you leave the hospital, you'll be approached to sign a consent form that will enable us to put your specimen into the research studies. The Michigan Department for Community Health is responsible for the BioTrust. So any researcher who wants access to the dry blood spots must make an application and provide a description of the, what they plan to do with the dry blood spots. The research applications are reviewed by a scientific advisory board who identify the merit of this, the research that's proposed. The Community Values Advisory Board provides guidance on BioTrust policies and is made up of residents that represent the people of Michigan. The kind of health research we're thinking about might be able to prevent major diseases of childhood or even of adulthood. We will ask you to give us permission and use those specimens for research, but again, they won't be identified to you as an individual or your baby. This leftover blood spot could be the thing we need to really begin a program of preventing some of the real problems that children have that we don't yet understand. So permission to study these blood spots in this way is vital to the future of child health. Let's be clear, allowing your baby's blood spots to be used for possible research is voluntary and may help other people someday. But newborn screening is important for your baby's own health now. That's why it's required by state law. Remember, newborn screening saves babies. I would say the difference between the testing and not testing as a father is the, is the difference between being able to provide for your family and keep them safe. And as a father, your first duty is protecting your children. This should be the first decision you make as a father, is to get your kid newborn screened.